welcome to Silicon Valley Video Remote, where we provide you with tips, trends, and tech information. Hi, my name is Whitney Henry. I'm a videographer, aerial imaging specialist, and currently a marketing rep here at BH. Today, I am joined by the amazing Adam Kopelman. How you doing, Whitney? You're too kind. Thanks for having me today. No problem. Thank you for joining us. I do have to give you a compliment on your lighting. Like this is the best that I've seen so far. And I do have to say within the past couple months, I've been on several video conferences and I can't see the people I'm talking to. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. The lighting is provided by Manfrotto with the Lycos three light flight kit. It comes in a small Pelican case and is very quick to deploy currently available at B&H. Now that we've given you the best lighting award today, what product are you here to talk about? Today I have the Sony PXW FX9 full frame cinema camera, and that is currently sitting on top of the FSB8 Sockler head with Flowtech carbon fiber legs. The FX9's main features are the 6K full frame Exmor R 19 megapixel sensor. This means that the image sensor can see in 6K resolution and an internal image processor downsamples that and records the image in 4K or HD. And this gives you a more detailed, sharper image. The FX9 sensor can see 15 stops of dynamic range, which also gives you more details in highlights and shadows. It has a dual base ISO with a low setting of 800 and a high setting of 4000, which makes it very good in low light with clean images. Picture profile out of the box is Sony's new S Cinetone, and this gives very film-like images with very minimal adjustments. It also has hybrid autofocus and face detection, which is basically a new normal in film production because you can actually use autofocus in certain situations and it will work for you. It includes advanced image stabilization and what this means is the image stabilization is done in post-production and how that works is the camera's internal gyroscope records the metadata and then you can apply the image stabilization in software as much or as little as you want reducing the resolution loss associated with IS. It also has 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, and that allows you to use the Sony's Content Browser Mobile or CBM app to control the camera and as a off-camera monitor, as well as upload files via FTP, and the camera will also allow you to trim those files before you upload them so you don't waste bandwidth. There are so many new features and so many upgrades. How does the FX9 compare to the FS7? The FX9 has the 19 million pixel Exmor R sensor. So the FS7 is an 8.8 .8 million pixel Exmor sensor. The R means the sensor is backside illuminated. And what that means is the electronics are on the back of the sensor, allowing more light to hit each pixel, which makes the FX9 sensor much better in low light. Um, you now have four audio potentiometers or audio dials, so you can control all four tracks of audio that the camera can record from the body without having to go into a third menu. Time code is included in the body itself. You don't need the XDCA adapter if you just want to sync multiple cameras and not do anything else. The XDA XDCA adapter can now also output 16-bit RAW as opposed to the FS7's 12-bit RAW. I know users are very attached to their cameras, so would you recommend users upgrading from the FS7 to the FX9? That is a tough question because I'm a huge fan of the FS7. However, if you are producing content in marginal lighting conditions, the FX9 will perform better. And once the 16-bit output through the XCCA adapter is enabled and a raw recorder is paired with it, I think we are going to be blown away by the image quality coming out of a camera in this price range. With users upgrading from the FS7 to the FX9, are we able to have the opportunity to cross-pollinate 
FS7 accessories to the FX9? Yes and no. So the FX9 utilizes the same XQD media cards and BPU style batteries. However, the camera itself is a bit longer and has more buttons and dials. So cages designed specifically for the FS7 probably will not be compatible with the FS FX9. But if you are using universal base plates, those should cross over. The XDCA adapter is also different. This is the XDCA FX9 and is not compatible with the FS7 or vice versa. Some new features include a slot, in, a space for slot in wireless receivers, usually dual channel, a dual cellular link, there's two USB ports for modems, a hardwired ethernet port. It has a six, this is capable of outputting the 16 bit raw signal, but does have the same V mount batteries that the FS7's XDCA uses. For those producing ENG video content, production studios, and even smaller work from home studios, is this the powerhouse camera that everyone should look into? I believe so. With its ability to produce clean images in low and marginal lighting situations, ability to get wider angles, the hybrid autofocus, and industry proven workflow make this camera very appealing for a lot of different users. Are there any updates that we need to look out for within the next couple of weeks or months? Absolutely. Firmware version 2.0 is set to release in October of 2020. And some of the features that will be included are full frame, 60, full frame 4K 60p recording, oversampled full HD in 180 frames per second, DCI 4K recording, the 16-bit raw output through the XDCA adapter, eye autofocus capability, which I'm very excited about, support for 6G SDI output, and even some touchscreen support in certain modes. Adam, thank you so much for your information and insight today on the FX9, currently available at b and I know users can't wait to get their hands on it, and neither can I. If you're looking for a more in-depth review, we do have a B&H sponsored video on cinema5d.com with an article that I do recommend all users looking into. Adam, again, thank you so much for your information. And I hope you guys stay tuned for another episode of Silicon Valley Video Remote, where we provide you with the tips, trends, and tech information. Thank you. Thank you, Whitney.